Browns. Hello, David. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you, Gustav. <laughs> uh, you, did you notice any change when I, I, I logged in accidentally with the uh, <laughs> tag runtime account? Um, so if I, I was leaving and that would have, I, I had to make you moderator, I think, or. You made me a moderator. I don't know. <laughs> I think so. I... <laughs> um, it's okay. Uh, in either way, I just didn't want to, you know, end the whole meeting, you know, leaving. Okay. Okay. Just, just let me know if I need to change anything. <laughs> but apart from yeah, I, I, I can either be a moderator or, or like a, a, a taking the notes, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you'd like to, yeah. To this direction. <laughs> uh, that's that's really awesome. Uh, actually, that brings up a really good point. Uh, we'll get started here in about two minutes. And then uh, just if anybody wants to be moderate or wants to be the uh, moderator for the meeting, um, please raise your hand. Be excited to have someone new uh, take the stage or uh, anybody who has done it before, absolutely welcome to. Uh, we'll also try to nominate a uh, note taker um, or we could crowdsource that to, uh, to see, how, see how people feel. We've been fairly good at crowdsourcing. I've taken help taking notes and generally there's other people in there taking notes too, so. The only hard part is when I'm talking. Like, yeah. that's that's the hard, difficult one. We just should have the computer taking notes. A something something AI. <laughs> I hear Microsoft's made some good investments or something like that. It works in Teams pretty well. <laughs> so next meeting in uh, Teams then. Oh. <laughs> I can state publicly, I have never ever liked Teams, and unless some big thing change change. I will net well, there's things that are worse because Microsoft team is like, what if we took email and made it worse? <laughs> nothing stays chronologically ordered. Nothing. It's just it's just a nightmare. And then somebody out there, sorry to whoever is the creator of Zulip out there, but Zulip is like someone looking at Microsoft Teams and said, you know, Microsoft Teams, what if we took that and made it worse? Um, <laughs> Without the, the video. <laughs> Oh no! So yeah, but, but to be fair, like the video video call experience is, is fairly good, I would say. So I'm not sure whether it's good or better than 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 Zoom, but it's it's definitely it good. does it does have pretty good. I mean, it makes your CPU and fans sound like they're taking off. But um, anyway, um, okay, I, Christoph, did you want to moderate? I can moderate today too. I don't mind. Whatever. I mean, I don't care. Actually. Who would like to moderate? I can moderate. That's fine. I haven't officially moderated. I've just helped guide conversations. So, okay. So I did then... once. Next time I will be the moderator and then we are there. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> okay. Well, we're at time to start. So, welcome everyone to the uh, WASM Working Group of the Tag Runtime for Tuesday, February 6th, 2024. Um, as a reminder that we give at the beginning of every meeting, um, this is a CNCF meeting, and as such, it is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. In general, just be nice to people. And so um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> first off, I actually, I've meant to reorder this when I did this. It was gonna be something with Wazi Cloud. I'm gonna do that after the tiny thing, since there's a couple things for me right here at the beginning. So it makes it sure easy to hand off to myself. Um, so just a, a couple small notes. Um, first off, I was talking to Sven, who is here. Um, neither of us had had time to write the start work on the white paper this week. And we were chatting about the fact that Preview 2 came out and a bunch of us are busy trying to update things to make sure we're on Preview 2, that we think we want to push that out to after KubeCon. So that way, like, we can actually just focus on it rather than trying to, like, juggle it with, you know, a bunch of us have talks we have to write. We have preview two to update to, so those kind of things are all going on. So we're uh, we're proposing that we just uh, push that till after KubeCon. So I just wanted to make sure everyone's okay with that and wasn't like banking on having it by KubeCon or anything. Love it. The silence just makes me happy. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's what we'll do. 
Uh, let us know if you have any questions and, and we'll get back on that um, once we're past KubeCon. Um, and then uh, next up, I just want to do in terms of uh, quick things, I, we have the OCI update, just kind of an update of what we've been doing in the the um, the meeting every other week. So James, you're here. Would you like to give that just kind of an update about where we got to last week and, and the plans coming up? Sure. Yeah. So uh, we've had two meetings now. Uh, last meeting, we discussed kind of a top level manifest and what that would look like. I think we settled on a few different naming schemas for that. Um, and then we also talked about the delivery timeline. Uh, and so we think probably in the next month or two, we can have something that we can share more broadly and get feedback from, from everybody. Um, and then next week, um, we're going to be talking about the config that the config manifest. So, you know, we talked about the top level, what, what do we need to define inside there? So I think there's going to be some interesting conversations there. So if you're interested in that, come join us next Tuesday. Uh, thanks. Sweet. Thanks, James. Um, okay. So now we're going to do, uh, handing it back off to me again real quick. Uh, I asked everybody in Slack if they wanted kind of an overview of the WASI cloud interfaces. Um, and so I was going to do that um, right now. I was going to step through like what the interfaces look like, um, answer any questions about where things are going. I, I don't want to take too long with this because everyone's capable of reading here. So um, I, I figure people can go dig into it. But I just kind of want to cover the high level things um, and then kind of give uh, an overview of where things are going. So um, <clears throat> let me pull up the right repos. I'm going to um, to actually uh, pull, uh, actually, no, I'll just pull this. So I had it up and then it closed because I use Arc and Arc helps me keep my tabs clean because I'm a, an obsessive hoarder, but sometimes things get closed. So, okay. Let me share that tab. <clears throat> yeah, this one. Sorry. Always takes me a second. I always have to triple check in Zoom because sometimes I click on one thing and then it like doesn't share what I thought it was trying to share. <clears throat> okay, so Wasi Cloud is a going to be what's called a world for those who are still new or coming here to learn about WebAssembly and components. A world is a description of imports and exports that can be that are expected to be provided by hosts and guests, which are the WebAssembly um, components running inside of hosts. Uh, and or that the WebAssembly components can themselves provide. So it's just an, an explanation of those things. So this world is describing a set of things that we all kind of expect to have. Now the Wasi Cloud, um, the Wasi Cloud core is really meant to be what we call the eighty percent use case. And the the eighty percent use case is like you, we're not looking for all the advanced things. We're looking for that that very common set of applications that builds that. That people build on everywhere. You see these in like in things like Cloudflare workers and Fastly's platform and other functions as a service. And like those, there's these basic core things that almost every type of application wants to use at least one of them. And so this uh, this world contains those those basically capabilities that we want to enable for pieces of code. Um, oops, not devs.tunnel. I want the world. So the world, as it stands right now, um, and there's I'll, I'll go through each of these, is a key value, um, self-explanatory, obviously, blob store, messaging, SQL, which I'll explain a little bit more about, runtime config, um, and then there's these distributed locking HTTP. We've made a decision. There's an open PR. It's actually what the PR is up here in the pull requests um, to remove distributed locking. Um, because it's not applicable to all the types of applications. We've had some discussions about where that would go. It doesn't mean, it just means it's not going to be in this world. Um, and then we have uh, WASI HTTP, which is already pretty much available inside of uh, basically WASI 0 0.2 or Preview 2. And um, we'll probably hit that one first because it's pretty straightforward. And then we have um, 
for sequel uh sequels one that we really don't really like right now and we're coming up with ideas of, of how to get around this um there's there's still conversations to be had because obviously you it's hard to have a sequel thing that maps to all the different types of things we could do something kind of like the sequel x package and go there's also arguments to be made like at least the most common syntaxes could be around so you could have like um like my sequel and postgres and those kind of things um but we're trying to figure out the best way to do it and for the to nerd snipe this audience as well there's been like conversations like well what if we just reduce it down to it's like essentially it's it's boolean algebra and then have it be done that way um there's there's some really cool ideas here but like wasi sequel is kind of the the tr the treble child right now so we're um just to be very clear about the status of that. I'm not even going to go into that that interface today because it is incredibly like fraught with peril and danger right now. So we're going to, we've been working together in, in the community to try to decide that. If people have any brilliant ideas, please feel free to go comment on that. So let's start with probably the most common one you're going to see is HTTP. Um, Oops, I don't know if they're straight to it. Okay, so this one is is currently, like I said, in phase three, it's been um, accepted. It's part of the, the preview two umbrella. And er, so as we move through, we're going to be going to like 0 0.2.1 and 0 0.2.2. And each of those will probably have more of these things available, including the ones from WASI Cloud. Now, the, the WASI HTTP is, is interesting because you could make it really simple, but there's things that start happening when you hit like async boundaries and stuff. Luke gave a really good explanation of this at the Plumber Summit last week. Um, and I will try to find that link. I also know Luke's on the call. So if he knows where the link to the, the live stream is and wants to share that, that'd be great. Um, but the there's there's some complexity here. So it's not as straightforward as you, as one would, would normally think. But there is also cleanup being done um, on these different types. So the main thing that you're looking at is this um, handler world and the proxy world. Or the uh, proxy, yeah, the proxy world and the... And the um, Gosh, I cannot remember handler world. So what you have is this proxy world is basically as documented here. It's the intersection of things that like has like HTTP forwarding, reverse proxies, like and streaming in and out HTTP requests. Um, this is I, I just wanted to check. Is this big enough? Do people need me to embiggen the screen? Right. Yes. OK. OK. Just making sure. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, what what you have inside of here is there's a couple imports from other common WebAssembly libraries that you'll need. But then um, there's two big things. There's the outgoing handler and the incoming handler. And hopefully those are fairly self-explanatory, but one is the way to send an HTTP request and one is to send the HTTP response. And these are the key things. In most cases, what's going to happen is for is a host is going to provide a way to make an HTTP connection. And the host is responsible for saying how those things are going to be secured. So when, when you make the request, like the host could deny you the ability to do that request based on whatever is set up um, in, that, in that connection. So you get this real flexible um, model where by default, you could just have a normal HTTP client. But if you're inside of a big company, this could be backed by an HTTP client implementation that implements the corporate reverse proxies or signing or whatever needs to happen. Yes, David. Um, it seems kind of odd to have an incoming and outgoing handler. Uh, wouldn't there just be like a handler? Um, yeah. just, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm curing the reason why that no, no that's good yeah so <laughs> this is it's splitting up the duplex nature of of uh http into two separate um two separate lines and you can you can allow or deny either one of those depending on your platform and it's like the thing is you have different things between being a client and being a server so what these actually look like actually helps really um explain what that is so we have this interface incoming handler and the incoming handler must implement this handle function. And it handles a request and then the response that goes out. And these are resources in WIT, meaning they are owned handles to something, generally a stream that allows you to stream data back and forth. So um, we will, like, I think that one's fairly straightforward. If you have like your handle request that you're used to having, like in either functions as a service or inside of like your, your application, this is that function. You get all the request data, what it looks like, and then you're able to return a response. 
The outgoing handler is the way to make the requests outbound, obviously, and it also has a function called handle, and you give it your outgoing request and any options that go along with that. Now, I'm not going to go dig into the types, but this has been, been cleaned up quite a bit, and it's fairly straightforward. Like, these are the two functions that need to exist. You need to have um, a, a handle function, and then you need to have a way to send something out. So it is fairly uh, fairly straightforward and easy. But that's what it looks like. I want to just pause there. Any burning, dying questions around HTTP? Okay. Um, next up, I'm going to go through the two interfaces that are most likely to move to the, to the next phases of proposal next. Uh, Next, anyway, that's a lot of the re repetition. I'm sorry. The next phase, the ones that will move to the next phase is soon. There we go. So we have um, quasi uh, config, or sorry, runtime config. And this is one of the most simple ones out there. But the idea behind a runtime config is that it's different than your environment variables. There is, as part of WASI CLI, there is an environment interface that allows you to fetch and do like get env and be able to get an environment variable. However, there's multiple times when a system might be multi-tenant and not offering an environment variable, or it could be a limited system that's not exposing that. And so this is basically the lowest common denominator for how you're able to pass configuration to a component. And as such, it is incredibly straightforward. There is a single WIT file. It's called runtime. So the whole package is called WASI config. And then there's an interface called runtime. And you have a get and a get all. And so you're, it's a simple string key to a value that is a uh, vec of bytes. So you're just getting raw bytes back. And then you're, so that way you're able to encode and send any type of data. Um, we might iterate on this and add other things, but we figured it's as simple as this can be is just to say, this is a pull based config. I pull the config I need when I run it and I receive that data. So it is extremely straightforward. There's no streams, no resources. It's just fetching some data so you can use it inside of your, your components. So let me know if there's any questions there, but I figured that one was pretty straightforward. But um, now just a, one other note here is a lot of people probably have already built some that use um, like the WASI environment stuff. Um, ideally, uh, we're going to be probably putting something that you can do inside of WASI vert and probably also through some of the tools like WAC that are out there where you can virtualize that away to a runtime config. So you can either take runtime and convert those very those things coming from the runtime config into environment variable requests and expose that and you compose those together. Or also you can do the other way around. Things could be coming in through environment variables and then you convert them to config things. So that's something that's going to all be able to happen eventually through WASI vert and all the other composition techniques. Uh, but that's that's something that's going to be easily easily doable for everybody. So this will be the way that we're expecting people to configure things. Um, now, the, the key to move these forward is to have two implementations. Right now, um, we we actually had started doing this inside of Wasm Cloud, used it as kind of the basis, and then iterated on it. And so once once people are OK with this, and we'll be running it by a few other people, we'll hope everyone else implements it, and then we can move it forward. So that's runtime config. Um, let's go ahead and go to key value. So key value is the other one that we're getting close on. Um, there, there was a bunch of work done here. Um, I'm going to show go through this, but then I'm also going to um, bring up some current work that's being done around um, around iterating on this. So we'll bring this up right here. Um, this has been this has grown. Um, this is where you're going to get a little bit of the opinion of Taylor sometimes, and I'm going to put that and clearly label it as such. This um, this has gotten a little complicated, especially in naming. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is is kind of uh, pairing that back a little bit. But the, the core concept is that we want to do something that is eventually consistent. And actually, what I've been arguing for is that it is at a minimum eventually consistent. It could be greater depending on the, the database, greater consistency levels, uh, depending on the, the database you connect to it. But um, it's fairly, uh, the other thing too is that you have to pass a, a like bucket handle, which is a resource. And that's the thing that lets you connect to whatever, it's the handle to whatever database you're connecting to uh, because the component doesn't necessarily know which database it's connecting to. And so the bucket is opened via 
a uh, basically a constructor method. And um, this thing is we're, we're we're still struggling with naming here because you're not you're not opening a connection um, for security reasons. You want to be able to bind these things at at runtime. Your host gives a handle, and so this is some way to identify that handle. Um, for so for example, like I was working with some of the people over at Fermion to uh, kind of look at this this interface, and I'll show you what we're, we've come up with. It's not live yet. But like you, the the idea is that like that you have a way to bind it inside of a spin dot toml, and inside of Wasm Cloud you have something called a link definition, and it also has a name. And those kind of names are what you're able to say like here is what is available to give to you. Um, the conversation will have to be had is if some people were trying to open up a database connection directly, but that kind of violates some of the security boundaries and principles of WebAssembly because you're saying okay now the host has to be responsible for knowing what. URLs and things are, are able to be accessed to rather than being able to externalize those capabilities. But that is a deeper discussion for another time. Um, but this is the main thing. You have a bucket and then these buckets are passed into these, these types of interfaces. So you have some things like um, the batch operations, which allow you to do many at the same time, obviously, by as by the name. And then you, um, you have a few other things like the atomic one that is uh, things like increments and compare and swap operations. So those are those are kind of the common set of tools. Now I thought I had it up and once again it closed. So let me pull it from link over here. Um, So this is one I was working on um, with some of the people from Fermion. This strips it down a bit. We're going to propose this and explain why, but it basically strips it down to batch operations, crit operations, and an atomic. Um, but the the idea that we're going for, and I think you'll see in a lot of these, these interfaces, is something that will be familiar to most people who write pretty much any programming language, is you have um, a resource that you open using a handle to a store. And then each of this, this resource has like methods on it. So these are like self methods. So you'd be like calling like self.get in if you were implementing this or you'd be calling, it, it's a, essentially a receiver method. So um, we're gonna work on that, iterate through it, just showing you that we are working on it right now. But the idea is to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible so that people can um, implement it everywhere and be able to use it. So. Um, to pause there, this is actually a good point to bring up. For this stuff to be included, it does not have to be voted on and put together as a whole world. So we're not voting on this whole world. We'll eventually vote on the world itself, but we are moving each of these packages individually through the phases. So things like runtime config and key value will likely be hitting phase two and three much sooner than some of the other ones. Um, but that allows us to start getting them in and available. And keep and like I said, we're, the goal is to keep it as minimal as possible, and then add on as needed from there, because we don't want to like unduly force lots of effort or things that need to be done for platforms and and different host implementations to to allow this to happen. So, pausing there. Any questions? Am I boring people to death? Is this high enough level? Low? Too low? I, I would have a couple of questions towards like um, the the SQL thing that you that you had in the beginning, but uh -huh. uh, maybe like I just didn't want to interrupt you. So yeah, I, let's. I'll put that right at the end uh, because it is a thorny topic, and so we'll. Uh, <laughs> for fear of rabbit holing, I will save it to the end, and then we'll come back to that. So I'll make sure we, I save some time for it. That okay? Sure. Okay. Perfect. So. Next up are the, let's see, making sure I got them all, messaging and um, blob store ones. We'll go to um, WASI messaging. So WASI messaging, um, the current state of this one is it needs a little bit of TLC. Um, oh no, looks like uh, Joe added this to resources. So he did some of the TLC, thanks Joe. Um, and so um, I'm gonna have to come back in here and I'm I'm doing some reconciliation between some of the different um, between some of the different uh, messaging things. Like for example, I think, unless he changed it. Yeah, like messages, for example, don't have a reply to, which is often common inside of different messaging bus systems. And I need to check how common that is, or if it's just common in the ones I use. 
Um, but for the most part, this is also going to have the same kind of straightforward thing. Like I have a way to like get a handle to a connection and then I come through and I have things that produce it and can consume it. And so a producer will be able to send a message way incredibly straightforward there, right? Take a message, send it out. So the client, the channel and the actual message you're going to send, um, this is a channel or a subject. Um, and then you have the consumer and the consumer is, um, is a little bit different because you have to say you're basically a receiver of, of the message. And so what we're going to do is have to have that discussion around what, what this API is going to look like. Where do, where do those subscriptions get defined? Are they defined external and on the host or are they defined by the client trying to call them? Um, those are the kinds of things we'll, we'll still have to have here. Um, I, I lean towards the opinion of you configure those on the host and then the, the business logic is dumb. It just has basically like an HTTP handler. I receive a message and then I'm able to do something with it. So these, this is the kind of thing that lets you consume and do what you need to do. It lets you say like, oh, I'm going to be like ACK a message or NACK a message. These are all common things inside of a, a messaging interface. And then you have, um, uh, yeah, here's the normal handle one. That's right. I forgot it was split up. So here's the normal handle thing where you say like, if I receive a message, this is what I'm going to do with it. And then possibly a configuration type of thing here. So pretty straightforward. We're getting there as well. Um, so what will, and like, yeah, see David's bringing up some of the things that I was still thinking through the dynamic Q naming. And a whole, there's a whole bunch of things here that, um, that we, we need to talk through, but like this one's very close as well. And now that, that Joe went through and fixed everything, um, with the resources, cause it was a little bit stale. Now it's actually all very close. So messaging is very close. It'll just be an implementation, um, an implementation thing that we do. So what we're, what we've been trying to do is those of us who've had implementations for this have been, been trying to have those conversations. Um, I'm bringing in like the, the Wasm cloud side, for example, cause we've had a messaging contract for messaging interface for like four years. So we're trying to bring in that and we're trying to bring in anyone else who's done these kind of things and make sure it's, it's looking good. It's the same goes for pretty much all of these. So last but not least in the, the interfaces tour, um, to try to keep it as short as possible is, um, oh, I also should talk about Wazi Observe, but um, uh, Wazi Blobstore. I was having a brain part there. Um, Blobstore is, has been updated um, to, well, it looks like we had someone actually do it and open up and, and get the resources um, running and working. So this one also the is going to be very similar to what you see in an S3 API. Uh, the one converse, and yeah, this is actually cleaned up quite a bit now. So this is looking pretty good. Um, this this is changing fast, if you can't tell, because I looked like two weeks ago and it wasn't like this. So, um, <laughs> so this is what happens, um, but it's a good thing. And so these are actually starting to look um, a lot more straightforward. Um, I was thinking about cleaning up the the API quite a bit, but actually this is this is looking a lot better as well. So so similar idea, right? We have the types defined. You have like what you'd expect: metadata, object metadata, and object IDs, and then you have something that is coming um, in and out. And this is the one where I'm going to probably need to recruit some help because we have um, like a like outgoing value or output streams or like can if you do synchronously or asynchronously i just want to make sure those apis are clean and um, that's kind of the the dirtier area right now um luke also talked i think it was luke who talked about that that there is async now it's not exactly perfect but there is async available um and so we just have to make sure we're supporting that properly but this is where you're this is the interface where in particular you're going to see lots of streams um as i talked about this with people at the plumber summit last week um, this was the one where people were like, yeah, we need streams because objects could be very large. And so you're obviously going to want to stream, um, for key value and for messaging, we're actually expecting those to be just, um, like a VEC U8 coming in, uh, because they should be small enough that, that we can handle it that way. And if we need to add streams, we can add streams. Um, so that's, uh, kind of the, the current state of it, but over here, um, you'll see, we have the blob store and container. Once you have a, a resource for a container, you're able to get data from that container, such as like objects the, the, with the object name, or you can list it. Just like I said, S3, we're all familiar with the kind of blob store API. We all kind of have an S3 compatible or close to an API that we've used before. So um, that is just how this is defined. It's all behind resources. Those resources are what you use to basically get the handle to and get the data from something. So 
that was the very, very whirlwind tour of Wazi Cloud. Um, hopefully it was not too much of a fire hose for everybody. But there, as you can see, as I was surprised by some of the changes that had landed relatively recently from when I last looked, like things are really coming along. And um, we're just working with the the interested parties of people who are, are actually implementing this because um, we need the implementations. That's the next step is we do implementations, try it out, see what we don't like, iterate, make sure everything's up to date. And then we say, we're happy with these, these work, and we can vote on moving each of the packages forward. So that is where we're we're at with Wazi Cloud. And now I said I would save time for Wazi SQL. Any questions, though, before we move to the Wazi SQL? <laughs> I always worry about silence in this because I either bored you to death, which was distinctly possible with this topic, or you're all like, no, nah, I got to go learn some more. So I, I, we'll see. Okay. Here we are with Wazi SQL. Um, oh, and thanks, Joe. He refreshed all the, the stuff here too. So um, Wasi SQL is really interesting. So Christoph asked probably that, was there a specific question you had in mind or did you just want to go through it and ask why it was difficult or? So I, I think I have a, like a gut feeling of why it's difficult or why, why it's considered to drop out for, out of um, Wasi Cloud. Uh, my specific question is like from, from a um, uh, developer perspective, like what would be the trade-off to use Wasi Cloud, uh, Wasi SQL if it's not part of Wasi Cloud? Like, is it, isn't it just like adding another interface or like, yeah. is there any other trade-off? Yeah, the so it is. That's why I was mentioning how each thing is additive. We add the interface and then we'll vote on the world. Um, yeah. The world is basically a guarantee that you can say like, oh, as a host runtime. So those of us who are writing host runtimes for the cloud, Right, we we would want to say we implement this whole world. We allow you access to all these things, but we don't think we're going to get there in the next, you know, three to six months. We have to move each of these interfaces individually, and then eventually get all of them there as a group. So, the the main concern with with the SQL is like it's that there's the things around binding parameters and how it's supposed to work, and then some of the like uh, SQL specific functionality for each type. Of SQL, like, are we talking, you know, are we talking about some of the stuff that Postgres offers? Or, you know, are we talking about, like, some subset of it that's offered? Or, or some of SQLite? Are we talking about, there's there's a bunch of different things that can change from each of them. Um, oops, sorry, wrong one. This one. And so, right now, it's just doing a statement. There's no, um, you're not doing prepared statements where you can properly inject user data into it. Um, so none of those security guarantees are there. Those are slightly different for everybody. And so we have to like properly do that. And here's the, I will, I will caveat this with, I know how to consume things from databases, from SQL databases. I am not a SQL expert by any stretch of the word or imagination. So I, there's only so far I can tell you here, but I do know that like having done, we, we had something similar like this in in Wasm Cloud, and it's the same problem. You have the, if you're not doing things properly, you have the possibility of SQL injection and you have to like do the proper prepared statements and you have to know how to map those properly for each language, uh, for each database style. And so all of those things, like it, when you first look at it, you're like, yeah, this can be pretty straightforward, right? But then you start getting into the nitty gritty and you run into those cases like right off the bat, especially the things with like prepared statements. Um, so there is a distinct concern. And yeah, that's actually, so David brought up exactly what I was talking about in my, uh, in some earlier calls and things. They're essentially like the SQL package inside of the Go library is something that we would probably try to shoot for, but it's it's a little bit more complex. We'll have to see, um, see how that works. I think I can't remember if I was having a conversation with you, Luke, or not. If you want to pop in, if you do remember any conversation we had, great. If if I'm not remembering that right, then don't feel put on the spot. Um, but there's there's some just some concerns around there, and so it's basically saying we're not going to do this yet. But if someone is motivated, you know, to take like the Go package and bring that in, um, that would be great. Like have a way to say like, oh, we're going to model it after what Go does. That's that's fine. I think it'd be worth proposing. But that's kind of the the concern right now. That's why we're, but it it can be added. Like you could take this interface as is and implement it. 
You could also for um, if you're if you're building a host or a platform, you could provide your own custom one and say like, here is the interface that like I need and then provide it that way. So like it's not precluding people from using it. It's just saying like, I'm not sure there's a perfectly generic way yet for us to do this um, for for like Wasi Cloud. That's the, the in, intention of my statement. Okay, make, makes totally sense. Uh, thank you, Paul, for clarifying this. Um, one last question from my side. Um, is there something like a, a like a list or a train of thought that you can follow to, uh, which which uh, like led to these conclusions, uh, whether something will end up in uh, Wadi Cloud or not? Or is it more like a distributed across like video streams and, and uh, I don't know, uh, chats and threads or? Go ahead, David. That is a really great question. Thank you so much for bringing it up, Christoph. In fact, uh, so at the second day of the Plumber Summit, and I think I think this part was recorded. I had not gone through all the content at this point, but that was one of the breakout uh, conversations that 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 we had. Is uh, and I'm hoping that it's it's recorded for posterity uh, because it was really great. Uh, we were talking about what is it what does it take to be considered into WASI like not just WASI Cloud Core, but WASI in general. Um, having a specification seemed like a good indicator of something that, that could be considered. Um, it, it was really not necessarily hard and fast rules, but more heuristics of things that seem like they would fit. So if you consider uh, WASI Cloud Core, um, think about the key value store. The key value store is a common uh, behavior uh, that is needed. It The implementation is not specific to a given vendor, and there are many different vendors that could implement that. And it, it I, I think it gets pretty close to that 80 percentile, like a happy use case. Um, so when we look at it from that perspective, uh, you could then take like a uh, file system, YZFS. YZFS is you know built not as a specific file system for one OS. It's really a generic uh, representation of the file system. Now, does the file system have a specification? Uh, you know, there's there's you know probably specifications of implementations, but not necessarily you know. Hey, here's an ANSI you know, specification for file system. Um, just getting to the point, uh, uh, it, it's more about uh, the heuristics and how it fits and if there's really a common case that's being solved. Because the alternative is not having it in WASI, but just publishing your world or publishing your interfaces and allowing the world to consume them. Um, it doesn't have to be in WASI to be wildly popular, right? Your computer agrees. Gave you a thumbs up. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that's the, uh, let's wait for, there we go. There's the rock. Um, that And that's a very key point here that David brought up again that I want to reemphasize. Key value is actually a perfect example of this. Key value will get you that first implementation, that first use case. But let's say you need those more special features. I think in a future world here, you're going to have vendors, you know, like Redis that'll say, here's the Redis API. We support the normal WASI key value if you're using our stuff, but you also can instead import our our uh, Redis colon like key value or whatever they, they have, and we're able to use it. You could have the same thing for all the different key value providers um, that are out there. So like those are the kinds of things that allow you to, to have that flexibility. Um, and it really is, like David said, it's it's kind of heuristic based. And we try to have those conversations out in the open. So we've had them in issues and pull requests, basically in individual repos, if they exist. And then also inside of the WASI cloud repo, when um, when it's kind of like more of a global, should it be in this world or should it should it exist? Um, and those those questions are just, we try to have those out there and in, in the community. Um, it's hard because it, it is a heuristic, but like the conversation, for example, I had had with David and a couple others around distributed lock was, okay, 
would distributed lock be used across like cloud microservices and fazes and this and it's like no like a faz isn't going to do a distributed lock in most cases so therefore like does that fit like we tried to ask ourselves is it fitting that does it handle for all the does it work for all these applications and would it be used by all those applications that was kind of the discussion we had around it and it it really just comes down to those kind of those kind of things we have and we try to have them in the calls or in um or in the the issues for the most part it's really done a lot of it async um okay um last little bonus content for you there is one out there i just want people to know about it is not in there yet people talked about bringing it in possibly under wasi cloud wasi cloud core eventually but that's down the line, but people are starting to look at, hey, can we do hotel stuff um, from a WebAssembly side? So I figured that would be of interest to this crowd was just letting people know, like I said, bonus content. Um, I feel like I had one more thing and I forgot it. I'm sure I'll remember it later when it's too late. But um, the yeah, I just wanted to let people know that this was here. Okay. Whew, there you go. Whirlwind. Um, thanks all. Hopefully that was not too much of a droning on to you. Um, the uh, last thing we had on, oh, well, there's, okay. One of them is something I put out as an open question. I'm just going to ask it and in two weeks, we can come back with it. All the conference talk schedules are live for all the ones coming up. Namely, there's, there's three events where you're going to probably hear about WASM. The first one is... Uh, Wasm.io. It's just before KubeCon in Barcelona. Um, so Wasm.io uh, has its schedule published. Um, obviously, you're going to probably want to hear all of those, but if there's ones of particular interest or things, people can call those out next time as well. We have Cloud Native Wasm Day, which is a half day right before KubeCon. Um, and then we have KubeCon itself. There's other stuff coming down the line, like WasmCon. We're going to have another one of those. Um, but what I would really like is for people to go go there, go out and curate and try to pull these things. And I'm going to try to pull in like and just like obviously Wasm IO is all Wasm, but and Cloud Native Wasm Day. But we might want to go to KubeCon and just take a look at like, hey, these these talks could be even if it's not WebAssembly, it could be WebAssembly adjacent, and just let people know. We did this last time. David did this last time for us actually, and it was really nice to have like the list of like, oh, here's here's all the people we know who are who are speaking and who are. Um, and who are doing uh, like talks on WebAssembly and just having that so we can kind of publish that as a guide essentially to, hey, you want to learn about WebAssembly at KubeCon? Here it is. And and we can put that out for, for people. So um, that is, that's the call to action. We have two weeks to do it. Look it up. I'm going to try to do it. If you, if you see any other talks, then, then please, um, please uh, let us know. Is anyone okay. affiliated with the cloud native reject? So maybe also rejects uh, contains some of some WebAssembly content potentially. Good, good call out. We should look for that, Christoph, because I haven't looked. I I normally I actually normally apply to and go to rejects every year. I'm not going to probably be able to make it this year, but um, uh, they have accepted. They've accepted talks that I've given about WebAssembly. So I'd imagine that if someone submitted, there's likely at least one there. So we should probably look at that. I also know at least someone who submitted something related to. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, anyway, so that's just mostly call to action, just so people know. Um, last on the agenda I had, um, and then we can, if there's anyone else who had any more, we can tack those on if we have some time. Um, we've generally been doing like a WASM news section. So um, I'm going to kick it off with one that I already mentioned. Preview 2 is live. That happened two weeks ago, uh, which means... It is all now official. That's in Wasm Time 17 um, and in um, all the latest versions of the interfaces. I think they're no longer tagged with the like 2023 whatever. I think they're just labeled 0 0.2.0 .0 now um, for the uh, interface, the WIT interfaces. So ta-da, that's the exciting news there. Um, anyone else have any WebAssembly related news that they think the world should know about, especially the cloud native world? Yeah, not, not really news, but something that I wanted to mention. Um, so uh, potentially a couple of you know uh, Quasm, your favorite um, WebAssembly runtime installer. Um, we basically kicked off the development for version 2, which um, somehow 
goes away from the WASM world, but uh, aims to be more like a generic container D shim lifecycle manager. At least this is currently the, the project name. We are looking for a better name. If you have any um, proposals, we are very open for this. Um, in any case, like in the uh, Quasm project, we um, started uh, creating like some 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 uh, roadmap or a dashboard where we are trying to organize the work a little bit more. Um, right now, this operator is in a state where we can install shims based on CRDs and you can install spin shims independently from your Wasm worker shims or Lunatics shims. So this is already working. We are yet... Uh, uh, tackling the actual life cycle part so being able to delete shims independently from each other updating shims so that your container d is still starting properly and um obviously we will need probably a bit of documentation and there's probably a lot of stuff where we could need some help and like if you're interested into looking into this um would be very happy to help helping us out <laughs> I can also uh, drop in uh, a couple of links. Awesome. Thanks, Christoph. Um, another one to just remind me of project stuff. I need to check with Wasm Edge. So this is not one I'll put in yet, but I think Wasm Edge is getting there towards having their component model implementation. So having people try that out or any help if you're interested in those things might be needed. I'm going to check with, with um, that side. I know that from the Wasm Cloud side, we're moving towards 1.0 with all the preview 2 stuff being out. So if you've used that, if anyone here uses um, Wasm Cloud, any feedback you have there is great as well. Um, are there any other projects that are doing like moving towards a bigger release with the release of Preview 2 that want to mention anything or want to request any um, extra eyes? Okay. Sweet. Any other news people want to talk about? Um, now we do have a little bit of time. We can close early. Were there any other big, um, oh, sorry. There was one right there. Um, the Talos ex Wasm extension is merged for Wasm Edge. Um, for those who are not on, in, on the call and can't see the chat, um, Siam said this, uh, the, the Talos Wasm extension was merged for Wasm Edge. It means you can run, um, Wasm workloads on Talos, uh, Linux. I'm assuming that's what it was using the, the extension. And then, um, there is a new Wasm course that he created, um, but I, yeah, he said that's not news, but counted for sharing. And that's perfect because, uh, yeah, any, we love to hear about those things. If anyone's created content for learning about WebAssembly, um, that is a great thing to have. So, um, we also have that, uh, we'll try to get a link for that, um, for the, for the course and, and how to get there. Um, oh, there it is. Perfect. We have one from chat. We'll put that in the notes for those watching this later. And um, just want to uh, just want to call that out too, since that was dropped in chat. Okay. Any other topics anyone really want to talk about? We only have ten minutes, so it'd have to be short. If you do have one, otherwise we can we'll have it for the next meeting too. Yes, David. I was just curious if there were <clears throat> notes for the two meetings of uh, the OCI subgroup. Yes. Let me pull those up. They're a little sparse for the last time because we mostly worked in the working document. Um, cool. So that's one of those things I think people should know about for that. So I, like it looks um, relatively sparse in comparison, even though we did have like a good meeting. I'm going to link that here in the chat. But well, we do um, have a video since David uploaded them for us. So yes. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah sorry, that. it took, no worries. No, that's good, that's good. We have the video and that's all that matters. Um, try to get those into the doc there so that if you're referencing the notes, we can. Yeah, I'm going to. And then, <laughs> yeah, that first doc is the notes from the meeting. And I just talked about the ones when we weren't actually in the doc. And then the rest we actually did essentially as a working session in the document. So the manifest that you see there right now is actually kind of what we've settled on for, for now. And then we're moving on to the config type next week. Um, so will be editing in there. And so really your best options are going to probably be video and that probably check the notes to see if there's anything critical in there. And then you're going to see a lot of stuff in here because we'll be up like looking at it. It was also a little bit spare because I was trying to take notes, but only had my laptop. So it was really hard to like swap between. So. Awesome. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. I, that doc is also shared within the uh, overall working group uh, doc, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a link there. It's probably in, in the, one of the uh, meeting notes at some point. It's Yeah, it's in the meeting notes yeah. somewhere. And the intention is to actually level. open... Is the intention to actually open a PR and get this into like tag runtime? Uh, yeah, we're still deciding on where it's going to live. That was the conversation <laughs> last time. Um, uh, Luke had suggested it could even go in like the component model or somewhere there because it's not like we wanted it somewhere in between like CNCF repo and Bytecode Alliance repo. And that seemed to actually maybe fit. Um, it could go into tag runtime. It really doesn't matter too much, but the good thing is we just have to basically put it into a repo somewhere. Um, Brandon, who's been very helpful and is on the call. So thanks again, Brandon, um, said like, basically all we'll do is go just like, make sure the, the OCI folks are like, yep, I don't see any problems. You look all spec compliant. And then we'll, we can just go from there. Like that's all it really requires. Did I miss that? Awesome. Anything there, James? Was that right? I think that was the yeah. kind of summary of what we came up with. Yeah, we're kind of in the middle of a bunch of different places. And so we're just trying to find the best place for it. So, yeah, BA seems like a pretty good place. Um, I think that would probably get a little bit more eyes than maybe tag runtime. Um, and Brandon, thank you so much for the help. Uh, Bjorn, Brandon, uh, you all have done awesome work. Thank you. Well, I think then we will um, call that a meeting. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, uh, just a reminder, next week on the off week from this meeting, we're, we're doing the OCI meeting if you're interested. And then the week after that, we will um, meet again. Remember that you can always add an agenda item on, on the agenda. It's open for editing and available for people to add things to. So if you have something you'd like to talk about next time or demo, please let us know. Um, and we'll probably, if we don't get any demo soon, I might start reaching out so we can make sure we keep that demo pipeline hot. Um, so uh, thanks everyone for coming and I hope you all have a great day.